give a bit of background on Ebron, um, sort of what we've been working on, backgrounds, and then flow into more of a conversation about um, building um, the open metaverse, um, touching on a few areas and um, sort of passing it around based on the, the different skill sets in the room um, around things like decentralized governance, Yo, try. Uh, open communications, um, and, and move it around um, and sort of flow where it's going to go, but really focused around building Web3 um, and why we can sort of improve on what we experienced through through web two i, th- I think a, a nice way to frame it might be if we wanted to create recreate this in a you know a, a proper open way <clears throat> how would it differ like what would the infrastructure be what would the governance models be um if what seem does end up on the call you know how would you stop the spread of misinformation um <clears throat> It'd be good if it was um somewhat around like um comms. So um like this is a this is a mode of communication, right? Um and I, I quite like the bent that um, you know, we're starting to create these three D worlds which are amazing, um, but they're built on a web two backbone. Um, how would we change this so that it's, you know, much more mirrors how we actually how humans communicate in the real world? And that ties in with um, what we're doing with Seekers in a big way, because obviously we're decentralizing the way comms are happening um, so that you have the same um, the same freedoms in the space as you do offline. Like you can, you only have to trust the person you're talking to. Um, you don't have to rely on anything else to, for communications to just happen. But then I think we can branch that off into how would you go about governing, you know, who, who plays God? Um, and um, I, I think the conversation will pro- flow pretty easily from there. Does that tie in, Dorian? Yeah, that works. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are we going through a list of questions? I it took me a while to figure out how to get up here. Um, just on your question there, Tyler. So we were keen to keep. You, you can hear me, Tyler. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. No, we're um, looking to um, sort of just ran through some general ideas. We're looking to keep it relatively open format. Um, sort of kick off, um, get people to give a bit of a background on themselves and what they've been working on, um, and then throw into a conversation about sort of building the open metaverse, um, the cool innovations, the challenges. Um, you know what we'd need to really replicate type of environment we're in now, but building it um, with the right tool sets. Um, you know, maybe getting into some experience around what you guys have had with decentralized governance, how that can flow into this area. Um, ben and I sort of focus more on the communication side specifically um, and how that plays in. Um, obviously, you're pretty familiar with what we've been working on on that side. Um, and then sort of let the conversation flow from that standpoint, if you're cool with that. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I know how to get it up on stage. Like, it doesn't look yeah, like I'll help you out, Tyler. Yeah, I'll help you out, Tyler. Um, come here, follow me. Hey, I'm Tyler. Tyler wait. Come here. I'm behind you, Tyler. I don't think he's here. Yeah. Hey, come here, follow me, follow me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
还是，所以之后如果要看他们今年选的作品，还不在这个空间是吗？不在，不在，我现在发给你。好、oh.。Oh, hey everyone. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 把那个公园下下来之后，登登录的那个账号就是你 South by Southwest 登录的那个账号的密码。OK， 嗯，啊，他是支持吗？他的账？啊，对，很不支持。All right， how do you guys get on this day? You have to use the wrong side. 啊，那我还真得又得去一趟学校。But uh, yeah, I'm trying to just put the URL in here. 你可以在家里把它下好了，然后带去学校，因为不用安装。I'm gonna just. Okay. But hey, guys, this actually is like I guess there's not a lot of people in here yet. Um. 挺大的，这这这下好久，六六十几个。对。啊，所以啊，他也是有那个时间限制的。在电影节期间。呃，应该是，但是他上线迟了，我不知道会不会有延期。这理论上应该就是电影节期间。Troy, did you do the key code? It looks like you did it. No, you didn't. Uh, did you? Where do I do the key code? Follow me. Is it downstairs? No, just follow me. It's right here. 我感觉这样子能开始吗？我前面都没有观众了。这嘉宾比观众还多。是Actually, I think that has to be done on a PC. I'm gonna email Blake and can put that in the chat there. And I'm gonna get off the stage. I can't hear you guys at all though. Yeah, so like, I had to go into settings and change the master. So like you hit B uh, and then there's a little my audio thing, and then you can like okay. change master voices way up, stuff like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. We're in the config. Like yeah, on your menu. Yeah. So you hit B. Sorry. Go ahead, Navi. No, you're better than me at this. Click B, Tyler. And then there's like a little sound button at the bottom. It says audio. Click it and then change the master or the voices. Oh. 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 我想听，我在上线聊。你每天晚上都在听。Can you can you hear me now? 对，电影节的一些开场应该都会唱。Yeah, yeah, can you talk? Yeah, okay, I can hear you. I can hear people in the audience too. It's pretty annoying. But can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I think. Bye bye. Bye. Let me just see. Can y'all? Oh yeah, you can't really hear the audience. I think. All right. I think take it away whenever y'all are ready. Troy still got cool, his crazy cool. avatar on. I don't really know. Oh, thanks, guys. But I'm here. Wait, Navi, do you want me to remove this avatar? It's your call. <laughs> I don't think anyone else can see it. All right. Yeah, I don't know. We can see. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we can see it. Well, you guys can see it. I don't know how to sit down. Right. I don't also don't know what I look like. <laughs> You're like a. I don't even know what. You can point at me and clone. I'm gonna be a party bear. All right. Should we get? Yeah, get I'm gonna be us. Yeah, yeah. Y'all should get Rowan. Yeah. 
Cool, cool. Oh, f thanks for everyone uh, mm -hmm. in the room here. If you could just um, uh, mute your mic, um, we'll keep this sort of chatter on the d just so we can prioritize on the on the panel speakers. Um, so first off, just want to say a massive thanks to um, Tyler and Troy, um, who we've got here. Um, for those of you that don't know, they're obviously huge shakers in the space. Um, I'll we'll jump in shortly, let them give a bit of background on themselves. Also got myself and Ben here representing uh, both uh, Seekers and Stylo. Uh, Ben's my fellow co-founder um, over there um, in the bunny suit, BD Jordan, uh, Tyler Picklebomber, and Danny Troy um, for everyone's background. Um, so we're gonna today have a pretty open chat um, just because we've got some really interesting heads in the room um, around open metaverse, building with decentralized approaches, um, how that applies to emerging Web3 and more immersive digital environments. Um, I'll probably kick off first and just pass over just to, to make sure everyone's got some background on who we've got in the room here. Um, Tyler, you want to kick off first, just give us a little bit about sort of yourself and what you've been up to the last couple of years. Um, I know you've got some pretty interesting stuff on the go at the moment as well. Not how, not sure how much you want to leak <laughs> at this stage, but um, yeah, you, you just want to give us a bit of background, set the stage on you. Yeah, for sure. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Are y'all able? Yep. Okay, cool. Cool. Yes. So, um, yeah, I've worked uh, with uh, Dory and Ben for a long time, going back even, uh, I guess, in like Goblin Town of 2018 and 2019 in crypto. But uh, I'm a co-founder of uh, a DeFi protocol called Barnbridge with Troy, and we also started uh, a decentralized marketplace called Universe. Um, and I think in between that, we've worked on a lot of different like DAO based technologies as well as um, metaverse based technologies. So it's been kind of a long time coming in between like somewhere at the intersection of DeFi and uh, NFTs. Awesome. Um, you want to give us a little one on one on yourself, Troy? Uh, yeah, so I've worked with Tyler for about three years now. Um, he kind of covered most of the basics. Um, I guess one thing he didn't really mention was that we are also starting a couple companies um, that are about to go public for a lot of people that are focused on building. One of them is focused on building tools for artists to access the metaverse in um, very easy ways. Um, and the other one is kind of a DeFi aggregator, um, and these will plug into DAOs and things like that. So, uh, yeah, we have like a lot of different, um, what is Tyler doing? Uh, we have a lot of different, um, <laughs> insights into everything. So yeah, that's us. Nice, nice. Awesome. Yeah. So like, um, myself and Ben, we've been working in the, um, communication space for, for quite a while. Um, I mean, I might kick it over to you, Ben, just to give a little bit of a background on the sort of where we've been dabbling the last few years and where we're looking to, to take things and, and collab with a few other parties. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks, Dorian. Um, yeah, so Dorian and I, we founded Silo, um, five, five or six years ago now. Um, Silo is totally focused on building out decentralized communication software. Um, and much more recently, we announced the project um, Seekers, which are, um, I guess, the node infrastructure for the Silo network. Um, there's lots and lots of exciting stuff coming down from, um, yeah, down from there. But um, I think today, what we'd really love to dig into is, um, you know, the, the the open metaverse and how comms in this kind of setting could happen if everything was decentralized. Um, you know, our lives are moving more and more online. It's it's so obvious, and um, our lives are moving into this 3D space in a big way. Um, so you know, if you know down the track, we allow this space to go the way of Web 2, what does that mean? And um, you know, if we weren't going to go that way, and we were going to make a choice now about um moving in a different direction, what could that look like? What could that look like in terms of um the way comms actually works in the infrastructure layer? Um, what could that look like in terms of, um, you know, how it could be governed um, so that, um, you know, it's, it's much more community driven instead of, um, you know, um, directors around a board driven. Um, so, yeah, I think um, we can dive into those topics. It'll be a really, really interesting chat. Yeah, and I think, I think there's a few key elements, you know, um, around that, I mean, we've seen um, to be able to sort of start building for this open metaverse space and you know, communications are a key component but then also 
sort of communities self-sustaining um, and driving through through having ownership and control, um, which obviously then loops back around to how you govern these communities. I mean, I know, Tyler, Troy, you guys have had a lot of experience, um, you know, rattling off a, a range of DAOs. Um, they're actually in play in the market, uh, which is a super rare thing. Um, do you guys have any comments around sort of, I guess, what you've seen over the last couple of years leading the charge around community governance based projects um, and I guess some of the opportunities and maybe some of the serious challenges that might need to be sort of dealt with um, to, to move towards more mass uptake? I mean, I think what's been really interesting, I mean, we could take it all the way back to um, just getting feedback here. Um, like, if you look at, like, what happened with, like, MakerDAO, right? Like, MakerDAO was kind of the first decentralized governance protocol. And, I mean, they, they even named it themselves that before that, uh, before, like, they had, like, an actual governance system in place. Um, and then you've kind of gotten into a place now where you have communities that have formed around. They, they are active in governance. Um, and we're starting to realize some of the limitations of these DAOs that were probably created in the last like year to maybe like two years. Um, and so you're starting to see these new kind of DAOs that are coming up that are much more free flowing and much quicker in operation. Um, and then like figuring out like, like what operations actually need to be done relatively quickly. Um, and then certain operations that need to be put down to very, very large votes. Uh, so like if you look at like Olympus, um, it is kind of a hodgepodge of a bunch of multi-sigs, and then there's a treasury. Uh, this is uh, a model that I think is probably going to get used a lot um, in the future because operations inside of a DAO, if you have to put everything through a DAO vote that takes seven days, it's a nightmare from a logistical standpoint. So the communities have learned to trust a lot of the, like the, the founders, um, as long as they're not like rug pullers, to have greater control over certain things that are like operational and then longer term votes for things that require treasury allocations. Um, and this is where I see a lot of it going. And I think probably Tyler, Tyler could speak to, to a lot of this because uh, he is actually in the process of architecting something like this right now. So I'll just let him take over. Yeah, I think ultimately like a lot of people are working on like DAO tooling technologies and anything like this, like ultimately like this type of a world that we're even sitting in right now and looking at, like, there needs to be, like, some governance here. Like, there needs to be, like, rules put in place. And, like, most of the stuff that I see happening with DAO governance is more, like, widgets and tools by, like, Web2 creators on, like, what they see as, like, needs of DAO governance. And, like, the, the fact of the matter is, is I think that most of the needs are actually, like, more around probably like more esoteric things where like you'd almost have to need to be in a DAO to understand them. So like where Troy talked about like the time scales for voting, like how different money is handled for different things, like what types of areas that you can allocate things to, like um, scaling of like different types of rules, like how you handle like people breaking rules or being bad actors. Um, and honestly, like everything that we've really built up to this point has been pretty elementary as far as like crypto goes, where it's like, it's very like analog and like, if this, then that, where I think that there needs to be like a lot more tech built into DAOs and not just like at the interface level, um, but more so of like a human tooling level. So like, I think that we'll get there. I've seen a lot of like money flowing into it, but I think that we're a far way away at the moment. So like, it's just gonna take like iteration after iteration after iteration of people building. Um, and then I think like over time, things will just get better and better and better. I don't Do know if anybody nice, yeah, cause, I mean, obviously the developments in, in these areas is, is so intensive. Um, I mean, in terms of actually bringing to life, like obviously we're sitting here in, uh, in uh, you know, VR chat, um, you know, built out through Oculus and Facebook and just the level of investment to get to this this stage, um, even just from the, the user experience standpoint is, is immense. Um, 
I mean, what what's your vibe on time frames to getting towards similar experiences like this, but fully built in a Web3 way? Mm hmm. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it kind of comes down to like actually building out the infrastructure to allow for those type of things to actually occur. Yes, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Every, I mean, I, every I, time I, I, I go ahead. No, uh, Troy's got it. Yeah. So <laughs> I was saying that I think a lot of the infrastructure still needs to be built out around that to allow for things like this to occur. Um, like the 3D worlds and everything, like that takes a long time to actually get, and then you need to get traction inside of them. Um, so I would imagine that you're probably like at least a year, like to more. I mean, like the back end stuff for the governance is kind of in play, right? But to inject the infrastructure with the Web3 stuff, um, I mean, you also have to like want to have the uh, the hardware take off, right? Like people need to get into mm. better VR systems, in my opinion. I mean, Oculus is pretty cool because I mean we're sitting in it and everything, but I still think there's um, I there's still a long way to go. Maybe Apple cracks it. I don't know. <clears throat> I do. I do like. I do want to highlight what you just said about the the like hardware component, like. Part, part of what needs to happen in the first place is, like, VR needs to take off. And so, like, basically, if a lot of people are using VR and have these headsets and, like, you can do things in them, then, like, it starts to change, like, how you can use, like, the compute power of this, like, headset or, like, on your actual computer. To, like, it gives you a reason to actually be able to, like, run nodes and do computes. But, like, right now, like all of this stuff would have to get built into web two and we would have to build web three governance into it. But for like this to truly be web three, like what we're looking at, like I don't know if the technology exists for that to work properly. And I think that it it's gonna probably come from a lot of people doing stuff like this that makes people realize like why they would want to run uh, hardware in order for like their specific area to show up or something like that but like right now the average person doesn't have any reason to run hardware because like facebook runs it for you or wherever we are here who like somebody's running this little area that we're standing in yeah that's a really good point i mean like obviously on the the silo side we've been built building a um a node decentralized node network for the better part of half a decade now and that's like exactly the point we're at now um, in, in the launch of the the seekers project we're um looking for creative ways to put that out into the market that engages um your everyday user um beyond those that are just hardcore into into running um running, running structure themselves for, for for the sake of um in, enjoyment and enthuse about the tech I think what we're seeing now, and this is this is what the Web3 space has nailed, is more of an understanding of why stuff like that matters. Um, I think in Web2, um, before we were walking around in 3D spaces, it was harder to understand why privacy might be a thing, harder to understand why, um, you know, centralized control might be a problem. Um, but, you know, seeing, seeing worlds like this and people actually being inside them makes it a lot easier, I think, to comprehend why those things matter because they matter in the real world, so they should matter if we're going to be spending more and more time here. Like if we're having a conversation, Troy, offline, um, face to face, you know, we 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 know the rules, we know exactly how things operate, and we know that um, we can trust each other, um, and we don't have to trust mm -hmm. anyone else. Um, when we're having this conversation here, those rules don't apply. Obviously, it's a bit different. We're talking on a panel, and people are, you know, people are meant to be listening in, but. There's this whole other element which we've become accustomed to in Web 2, um, which is that data harvesting, which is the fact that, um, you know, I don't own anything, really. Um, you know, my avatar can be taken away from me or, um, you know, money that I have might be controlled in a centralized system. And I think these 
these um these concepts are they, they are being grasped now in such a massive way um that i think there's enough impetus and there's enough thought going into it that we can conceivably believe that we could recreate the the um the real world digitally but not in a way that compromises on those things that make us human and i think that's that's the most important thing um and i think people are moving in that direction obviously not we're not there yet but um you know, the way tech's moved over the last five years, even over the last two, has enabled us to kind of open our eyes and go, shit, you know, this might actually be possible. Let's let's work together to make this happen. Yeah, that's interesting. I, so, I, like, as long as you put, like, the pillars that are kind of the infrastructure around the space in a decentralized, trustless manner, you can then trust the, in, the metaverse in which you are living because, or you're experiencing because then you wouldn't have to worry about them like rugging you or taking stuff away from you, right? So like, like changing things in this room where there would, be, there would be governance set around that, right? You can trust that, that things won't be taken away from you or even like your avatar or something like that, right? Like if it's stored decentrally, you can exist inside of it with the, with the trust to the network that you wouldn't have to worry about something being taken away from you. And then you can start building in even more complex systems into it from that. One of the things I do think that's kind of interesting is how people express themselves in the metaverse. So like right now you all can see me waving my hands and the only reason why you're able to see that is because, yeah, like you can, because I have these like joysticks that are in my, yeah, there you go, Dorian. Like he's a he's partying. That's the party bear right there. That man's the party bear. So you can you can see me moving and like you can express yourself in this world. But if those those expressions and everything can be taken away from you, but if you have it stored in a decentralized manner, you can trust that metaverse in a much better and like more real way than how we have than what the systems are now. Or, or and then like as you kind of start to progress on these. This ability to express yourself, you probably can see my mouth moving right now. I think I changed to an avatar that has that. Can you guys see my mouth move? Is it yeah. moving? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I can see your, I can see you shaking your head or like nodding your head, Dorian. Right. So like that expression is there. I've noticed that in some of the newer ones, like one of the things you can't see right now is if I'm smiling. The only reason why you can see that happening is because. I'm talking, right? My mouth is moving because it knows that it's picking up sound that my mouth is moving. But you can't do nonverbal communication very easily with your mouth inside of the metaverse. And one of the things I've noticed is they're starting to put cameras on top of the, uh, the, the VR headset that like focuses directly on your mouth. So you can smile at someone and you don't have to be speaking, right? Or you don't have to hit the gesture button. It just automatically picks it up. So like as these ways that you can trust the metaverse more, then you'll also be allowed to express yourself more in a better way. That's my opinion. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I think that's that's so if if we're talking about expressing ourselves in this space, we need to we need to know that um it is truly us that is doing the expressing and I think that's the thing we need to solve for and is we're moving towards. Mm. I mean if you if you talk about the whole trust layer, um you know, there, there are various degrees in which a space like this needs to be built, right? There's the actual hardware or the infrastructure that's running it. There's the, um, well, what else is there? There's the, there's the governance, like how does this world evolve and change over time? Um, we, um, we were also talking through before this chat um, with about, um, you know, misinformation and how you handle those problems in a social setting. I mean, these are all things that we need to look and solve for. Um, but yeah, how, how we go about doing doing that, I think it's 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 just going to take time, and that's okay. You know, good tech takes time. And that's um, it's actually unfortunate. Wasim got um pulled out. He had to go put a put a fire out on his side, but he was going to join us. He's um, he founded um, Blackbird AI, so they're sort of like one of the leading outfits that help um people pretty much figure out what's real and what's not real um in terms of the content that comes out through all comms channels. Um, so maybe grab him another time to come in. It'd be super interesting to get his two cents in terms of what you know the metaverse is going to bring to that. It's just a, already an explosion of figuring out what content you can actually trust and what you can't, even just in, in, in Web2 social. And once that moves into this environment, obviously it just adds in a, a complete other layer to things, which is going to be super interesting to see. I never really thought about that because, like, this thing doesn't even, like, every time I get in the metaverse, like, I mean, this is, like, VR, but, like, every time that I have this Oculus on, 
I feel like I can see where the future's headed, but like it still just feels um a little janky. But like I like I <laughs> I do like I can see what it is going towards, which is like a fully immersive like just basically 360 degrees, but like spherical version of that like informational overload like i mean i don't know i was just looking over here like i don't know what it says on this like back wall back here it says something something for all so like yeah i mean like if they're up there where all these buildings are if if there was like uh i mean there's going to be advertisements there's going to be propaganda like that's what advertisements are is trying to talk you into doing something that's what propaganda is is trying to get you to think a certain way and so like Right now, I mean, there's not really, I, I mean, I don't really see any type of, like, information that's trying to manipulate me to do something. But if you extrapolate everything that we're looking at, I mean, you'd have to assume that we're going to be, like, bombarded by it from all different directions. And mm. some of that won't necessarily be uh, advertisements. It probably will be um, propaganda, and, and some of it will probably be used um, nefariously. So, I mean, what this does seem like to me, though, is, like, a little bit of the, like, Wild West. Like, I don't know how, like, if you have an infinite amount of land that you can go to, how do you govern every piece of it? Um, and I, I don't know what that looks like. Like, but I've never used this particular application, but, like, you'd have to assume that something like crypto voxels is just pretty far-reaching and the more that you're utilizing it the more stuff it is essentially there and so i think governing that and dealing with like misinformation from it i don't know how we're gonna i mean i don't i don't even know where i'd get started <laughs> yeah and no, I, I think there are two different layers to that right there's um governance of how the world works so how data flows and you know the, the expectations that you have within it and then there's governance which is more like law really over what you're allowed to do um do within it um for for us um with silo and seekers it's very much about establishing how the world works so that we so that everybody comes to the table and knows um you know that certain things definitely happen and you don't have to worry about x y and z um but yeah i mean in this space what is what is allowed and what's not allowed given those rules with us in it um i think that's a whole nother chapter of this story yeah it's huge i mean like i think we're in in just build mode right now like we've obviously we've started working pretty closely with the fluff guys and just the progress they've made in terms of bringing the stuff to life and bringing communities together and delivering even over just the last nine months has been absolutely insane. Um, and I mean, we've been focusing primarily on the communications piece for you know, the better part of half a decade, which we're going to just start the process of deploying into it. And that's sort of just one, one component of it. Um, so I, yeah, I think you guys are completely right. It's going to just take an amalgamation of a whole raft of just amazing projects um that, that get things done and the the resource and the complexity is just um yeah going to be immense yeah and i mean on the time frames thing it's without a doubt that fluff world is you know head of the pack in terms of getting stuff out i mean i um i had a um you know experience inside my burrow this morning which is just <laughs> so so cool and you can see how um you know starting from from that as a base that and 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 the amount of work and um, you know clever heads in that ecosystem. Um, I mean, it's yeah, the the places Fluff is going is just so so exciting. On the um, I mean, Tyler, I know you in particular. You've you've, you've had a lot of team affected by the, the the events that's been happening over in over in Europe and in that. Um, on the communication side, is, I mean, has it opened your eyes up at all? Um, more about sort of the communications tech we're using at the moment and what we need to really deliver on. I think Tyler might have muted himself. Oh no, he's there. No, I'm back. Oh, I like went to go do. I went to go try to find um, my e-sig, and then I messed up my room scale boundary, and now I don't really know what I'm doing. But <laughs> I didn't hear what you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking a screenshot. It's pretty awesome. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. 
I was just um, Carl, I was just probing. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of team that were, was affected by recent um, global events. Um, and I mean, did that open your eyes up at all about sort of where we're at with, um, I guess, communication software and what we need to get onto in terms of delivering for sort of freedom of communications? Honestly, I think that like, like Dorian, the last time I saw you was in New Zealand. Like, I, like I got like the last flight out of New Zealand going to like coming back to America when like COVID was breaking out. And like, honestly, it was before I flew to New Zealand. I was in New York hanging out with Troy. Um, and like that entire process of like going from New York and talking about like, I mean, we, it was like in 2019 or 2020, early 20, like the first two months of 2020. And I don't really like, it almost felt like we were like kind of echoing like parrots of each other on like how important all this stuff was uh from like privacy to privacy of money and i think that um the i think covid itself like where we talk about like everything going on with nfts i think that you can like look back to even 2017 to 2019 and it's like obvious now that like DeFi was going to be the first like use case of crypto because the reason we all got into crypto, I don't think it necessarily was the privacy of money. It was just like kind of obvious to us that like our governments couldn't just keep printing money incessantly. And I think like we're going to like so now it's like hindsight's 2020. Like, of course, we all got into crypto for the same reason being like, oh, we can't go like print money forever. But I think that we're also going to look at hindsight being 2020 when it comes to NFTs, because the censorship and misinformation uh, uh, was, in my opinion, substantially worse during the COVID. Like, like I still don't think that everyone really knows like a lot of information about COVID. Like, I'll say things to Aaron, Aaron McDonald from Fluffs, that I think is just like a known fact here in America, and he doesn't have the same opinions based on the information that y'all get in um in New Zealand. And now that me and Troy have moved to Puerto Rico the information that the Puerto Rican people get compared to the mainstream media that like I would normally get in like Florida or North Carolina are very different, even in like their understanding of like, like, so it's almost like we have these like alternating realities. And I think that like world governments and major tech companies have made a major push to try to censor uh, what is thought of as you know, not good thoughts, like where like Troy may have like a political opinion that's different than a guy that I work with named Max and like, but we still all get along. Like when you allow uh, computer algorithms to get that, like to do that, then like Troy may be the one who gets censored or like Max may be the one who gets censored. So I think like everything that we were talking about in, the, in your office in New Zealand like from that panopticon thing and like the concept of being monitored and like how people's like creativity is absolutely like limited if they're told how to think like like think about like Leonardo da Vinci if like he was told like or like Galileo mm -hmm. like if if it was censored that he was able to say that the world was not flat at one point like that would actually be something that if this technology existed 400 years ago like it would actually be censored that the world was not was was flat and not round and now it's like it's almost like a ironic 360 that like the crazy people on the internet are the ones that are saying that the world is flat and like i i, I mean even though i think they're crazy i respect their right to be able to talk about whether the world is flat or whether the world is round i think actually dorian to answer your question about the whole ukraine situation um, in a really weird way, taking this full circle, like the concept of government, like us having sovereign money to ourselves, the governments can't print more of that goes back to DeFi. I think this new concept of anti-censorship and the immutability of NFTs and like the unstoppable, like I would like go hang out with Troy while we were talking about that in DAOs in New York and then immediately go out and talk about this but it sounded at the time like we were crazy and it was no big deal and then covid hit and it became so real how important it was i actually think um in a weird way 
the what I think has scared everybody in this most recent thing isn't necessarily the information. It's that the U.S. government actually sanctioned a central bank. And so, like, I, I think what where we have come up with this concept of not your keys, not your, like, money, um, as well as, like, this concept of having your own money in your own self-custody. Like, I think that that is now becoming a lot more important and i don't think that people realize how important it was like right now yeah we're we're using this uh like these sanctions to go after someone who like in my opinion is a complete scumbag and like bad like terrible human being that i think the world would be better off if he like died like he's blowing up my friend's homes but the the way that we combated that is probably just as dangerous I mean, within reason as, as like him. Um, and I think that it's important that people notice that like this concept that like Coinbase is being asked to shut down everyday average Russian people's accounts. Like, well, that's good and great when we're going after Putin, but like what happens when the, that gun turns on you? Um, and I, I think that uh, that's probably out of this whole conflict. I, I mean, on top of the fact of just like the ability not to take money, like, I mean, one of the ways that I got a lot of my team out of Ukraine was them knowing that when they hit, like, Poland on the other side, like, we could send them crypto. Um, just getting, mm -hmm. in, like, things in and out has I been... I mean, but even, so but even we were able to get crypto into some of the people inside Ukraine at the time. Like, I mean, they were, that was the only way we could easily get money to them quickly. And so, so they asked us specifically for crypto. Like, they were like, send yeah. us crypto. And so there was like a day there where we were just sending been... USDC directly in. I mean, I know I've but helped my family because my family's in Ukraine and, and like, or my, my wife's family. And like one of the few things that's really been able to help them is like that I was able actually to send them capital immediately. And then they already had had, they already have the on-ramp off ramps there. So like, it's been a lifesaver because that was your only way of actually getting money into a bank account, which they had a card. They didn't have to get like physical cash, right? They had like a bank account. They could put the capital in there and they still had a card and the, the bank, could, the banks are still running for now, even though like cash is pretty strapped right now, but uh, they still have that ability. So, I mean, Troy, I'd ability... actually be just straight up interested in your answer to the same question that I answer. Cause like, I, like Dorian, you gave it to me, but like the truth is like Troy's like, I mean, it's affected me more than the average American, but like it's affected Troy like way more. And like Troy, especially like the information, like the misinformation, like when I went to Troy's house, like he has like a legitimate, like minority report, like operation command center, just filtering in information <laughs> so that they can see it in like in what's going on in ukraine because like his wife's like family is there and so like troy you could you probably have a much better answer than i do on on how you think that this affects like i don't know all this well, type of stuff and informational overload well i mean there's definitely been information overload and um i mean I guess I would just say that, like, the first, the, 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 the biggest game changer, though, has been the crypto, right? Like, crypto has been able, the ability for us to get money over there without having to go through traditional lines and wires um, and those hurdles, like, that's a huge game changer for my family, our employees, our, like, coworkers. Like, th that, that quickness and, fa like, how fast it gets in there, um, I know we save people because of that. So, I mean, misinformation, all that stuff, that's, that's a, that, I don't know how that really kind of plays into this, but like from a communication standpoint, um, I think there's definitely things like there's, we have people inside of Ukraine that we cannot get a hold of right now. Um, they are trapped inside of one of the like heavy, like heaviest bomb cities inside of the, the uh, country. And it's been like eight days since we've heard from them. So, like, communicate like, like from a communication. Uh, yeah. It's been, been 11. eleven. We haven't we haven't heard from Alex since March fourth. Wow. All right. Yeah. So eleven days. Um. So like, and just watching those lines of communication have been shut down. 
Yeah, sorry. Watching sorry, you guys no. from the outside as well, it's just been mind blowing because, like, I've see, seen what's come out of your universe team. You've just still s smashed along. Um, you, you've managed to help all those people out, and you've also um, come in, you know, with those charity cause drops as well. It's um, just the 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 combination of what pulled together on the universe side is just. I just want to um, put a massive round of applause on that one. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know who else is involved on the on the top end? And I that, mean, we that, had that was just mind blowing guys to see that come across. Yeah, I mean, we we still have like team members that some of them are still in Ukraine and they're on the uh, the west side, but some of them also were able to get out early um, when things started to go bad. So like, there was a massive amount of the people that were able to get out. They all like banded together and like it re like Tyler and I kind of like cheerleaded the whole thing but those were the real heroes behind it like the ones that were inside and um outside uh and it, it you and one of the things you guys don't see is like inside of our internal slack there there's team members in there that are they're operating and like helping each other out like some of them are inside some of them are outside they have volunteers that they're communicating with like my wife's uh, father is like in a division that's like fighting for Kiev, and he they that division needs like supplies, and like there is a girl inside of our Slack who like like I just we, I got a list from her, her her dad and like I gave it to her and she sourced everything, and like now it's getting shipped in like it's absolutely amazing to watch the, like everyone kind of come together inside there and that's not really public um, I guess it is kind of now but. Uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a huge team effort. Like it's not just one person, not Ty Tyler standing up now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's testament yeah. to, um, to community and crypto, isn't it? I mean, one of the, one for of the sure. biggest things about crypto is that everyone's on the same page and everyone's really just, um, going for the same goals and it brings together people in a way that, you know, I haven't really ever seen before. We've also seen yeah, the amount super of interesting cases come out. Um, you know, the last obviously between what was happening in Canada, then the connection with that that the protest, and then the bank accounts, and then what's been rolling out in Ukraine, um, and then the responses and the reactions to that. I think we're seeing and it, that combined with the emergence of um, you know the, the, this metaverse space as well, having you know what I guess what I consider a, a, a lot more uh, adoption compared to where we were a few years ago in digital assets. It's just opening up a whole different world. It's just really interesting to see how it rolls out and how it enables. Um, and then also, you know, how that's going to flow through and become harmonious with the, the current financial system or whether that's going to really be a rocky next next period of time. Yeah, that was well, one that of the one things guy... that I was kind of curious about because, like, when we were sending capital into Ukraine to these – to the, the a lot of them were – they were stuck in Dnipro and some of them were, at the time were in Mariupol. And they specifically asked us to give them crypto. And I would ask, I DM them and I was like, so are you going to like take this out? And some of them said like, no, we will give them direct, like we'll just give the, these people, like you, we can pay people in crypto here to help us, right? So they don't have to go through the banks because long-term some of those people knew that they would be able to use it like longer. Um, I found that fascinating because there still is this ability to transfer value around and they'll still, they can still believe in a long term without having to take it directly off. Like we probably think of like, oh yeah, we can always take it off, right? But some of these people were thinking like, well, I can't do it right away, but like I can keep it or I can use it someplace else. And so like, when does that kind of flip? Like when, would, when do most people rather keep their crypto than their fiat? And like, what is that turning point? And is it, is it war? Is it sanctions? Is it uh, lockdowns in some form? Like, at what point does that whole system like flip? Right. Um, it, I think it is. Do you, I think it's. I think have we're you in heard it. That's that? The, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have you, you? Did you read that thing that I don't know who the guy is? Um, but like, he's a very famous uh, European. He's like a young dude. Dude, but like all the investment bankers all look up to him um and he was talking about like Bretton Woods to Bretton to Bretton Woods 2 being like what happened in like 1971 where we went off the gold standard and like pretty much what he's saying at this point is like 
whatever Bretton Woods three looks like, like if Bitcoin survives, like it seems like it will be very much like uh, well affected by this. But like it's very like his, like his like I guess tagline or thesis of the whole thing is like after this Ukraine situation and like Dorian Goodshow on the um on the Canada trucker situation. Because, like, so much shit has been happening on Rapid Clip between COVID, rolling into the truckers thing, rolling into Ukraine, rolling into hopefully what isn't World War Three. But one thing that is clear is that due to what has happened over in 2020, uh, 2022 in particular, like, his thesis is that money will never be the same again. Like we are definitely at a at a turning point or a focal point where money uh is going to change. Like we're the old the old financial system is is not going to exist the way that it has over the past uh what is that, forty forty years since nineteen seventy one? Like from twenty twenty two on will be a different world than what we saw from 1971 to 2022. Yeah, and it seems like there's been like a trifecta of causes um, that have come in on that, obviously between, you know, the the creation on the back of the first economic crisis to lockdowns to economic issues to then the, on the creative side, the development of the metaverse being digital native and just needing a digital native currency. It's just setting the stage from every possible angle. <laughs> it's very it's so easy to get distracted in this in this space isn't it <laughs> yeah so we've, we've obviously Try gone um, <laughs> uh, you know away on a you know a, a, a bit of a tangent but i'm um, obviously like you know i think um particularly from you troy and tyler like you guys are just um so knowledgeable in everything in this area it's just super fascinating to sort of hear you guys two cents um on, on what's moving in these areas um you know like i know we we've got a few more talks happening over the next couple of days with other guys from our team and those involved with the, the fluff ecosystem from you know fluff to asm um to party bears and just the amalgamation of everything that's coming together there is is insane um you know if for those of you listening, if, if you're not intimately uh, <laughs> informed as to what's going on in that, that space, 100% get involved. Um, we've obviously got a project coming out now called called Seekers, which builds on the back of about half a decade of development um, on the communication software side, which is going to heavily hook in to there. Um, we'll be sort of seeding more stuff out of that in the next couple of weeks, but super jazzed to bring that to life because you know, the thing we realized is just what it takes to bring even just the individual components together. Um, you know, and just uh, like what, what um, Troy and Tyler are working on on the universe side as well. Like I know your your marketplace release, which is super needed given recent events as well, um, can't be too far <laughs> off, right? <laughs> uh, Can you guys th- give any, uh, any intel would, on that? Or I think look for a DAO vote maybe tonight. I thought we were supposed to <laughs> go to the band. Yeah, it may be tonight. It honestly th- – okay, so one thing to expand on what you've been saying, Dorian, is like Troy was working with me back um, on – like decentralized media and DAO related stuff back when like I was working with you guys on decentralized uh, communication and like private communications. And like a lot of what we're building now, like has been bouncing off of each other's like, uh, and, and it, it extrapolates. So like, like the fluffs, for instance, like, they used a lot of the DNA and like changing abilities that like the polymorphs used. And then Aaron, I mean, I think fluffs like are dope and like Bugs Bunny is like more loved than the gremlins. And so like, I think that a lot of that was like Aaron taking like a lot of what we were building and like kind of extrapolating a step on it. But like Troy was working with Singular DTV and like new Aaron um, going like super far back in the day. So like it almost feels like our particular group of like everything that we were all kind of loosely working on together just somehow like all became this real thing. And like it's not just like like what we're building at Universe really came off of 
like things we were working on at Barnbridge that we knew we needed like a decentralized platform for NFT is that were more geared towards like the financial side and we saw the censorship uh op for, i guess like um the opportunities for censorship that like we pretty much thought like were a foregone conclusion that like OpenSea was going to hit um and i and that has happened like there there are no financial nfts but then like when i was launching pepe i really was just like from getting like i think i was the first person ever to get dcma in in nfts um and the truth is i could have i could have fought that but i didn't want to rip off like matt fury's work and like i respect the guy i didn't know that he even existed so like the the long story was is that like if i had fought that would i have gotten yanked off of uh open for the dcma and i expect them to like um adhere to that and so, like, kind of looking at all this collectively, it's a little surreal that, like, the types of things that we've been talking about for five years, um, again, almost, like, feeling like it was, like, we were parrots, yeah. like, just echoing off of each other. It's all real now, and, like, everything that I'm working on right now is, like, five years of work, That and everything Dorian's working on is five years of work, and everything Troy is working on is five years of work, and same with Ben. And same with Aaron from Fluffs. And, like, it it really is, like, it. part of that is due to the Wild West and, like, how much open space there is for opportunity right now. But if you're a hardworking person, like, you can definitely get in where you fit in. But a lot of, like, it very specific to Web3 is 100% coming to life right now. And so, but, I mean, that was a rant off of what your question was. One thing that uh, is Universe was probably supposed to ship today but ironically um y'all like y'all squad in new zealand um since it's what y'all sunday evening right now or sunday morning it's our it's our saturday yeah. evening we we just got to get like jerry and coon and all them on so it may end up actually l like going to vote tomorrow but we it, we do like all of us like are it feels like everybody's starting to take notice of what we've been building, but like we're still a pretty interconnected group. Like in order to get Universe Live, yeah, we needed all those uh, Ukrainians who did work and put in work like in the middle of hell. But we we still lean on like our New Zealand and Singapore squad. Like we have like groups in Bulgaria we're working with. So like somehow between like Barnbridge and Universe and Fluffs, like one of those three things really caused like this almost like worldwide network of like i don't want to call it like the universe mafia or, or the fluff mafia the barnbridge mafia but somewhere along those lines like we basically have like an international network of people working together to like make a lot of what we used to think, think were these like far out concepts that maybe weren't ever going to be a big deal like now they're very real and they are a big deal and they're affecting the world mm, it's, it's epic dude yeah and I mean, obviously we've been working with you and Aaron for quite a while now as well, but I need to give a massive shout out to Alex and Jesse from Fluff. Um, obviously we, we just started working with them more recently, but those guys are pushing some amazing things on that side, sort of connecting a lot of dots um, there as well, which is, yeah, it's, uh, it's really awesome just to see it all coming together. <laughs> you know, it's uh, just the, the amount of time these things take to get together is mind blowing, but it's just teamed out to be a super cool decade coming forward. I have a lot of respect for those dudes. I get them confused which one is like Cerno, the artist, and which one's the CEO, but they like honestly, man, those guys have been uh, like unbelievably impressed. Like, I'm just blown away, impressed by those dudes and their execution. Just the speed at the rapid clip, like, none of this stuff really came with a playbook. Like, when we were talking about DAOs, like, DAO doesn't come with a playbook. Like, Troy probably made up, like, the concept of DAO first, and then I named it. That didn't come with a manual. Like, running an NFT project didn't come with a manual. Like, building decentralized backends doesn't come with a manual. Like, do doing decentralized private communications. I mean, honestly, like, Dorian, y'all, like, Right now is the, is like if there's ever been a time that like the world needs silo. I was me and Troy were on this thread talking about uh, 
uh, we were with this this guy named Tyler Reynolds that uh, ran Google Pay, and he's super into crypto, and he's like a really stand up dude. And uh, he was actually kind of trashing on Signal, and I was like, well, it's open source, like yada yada, like. And he was like, ha like, and it really scared me that a person from Google said this because my answer to this question would have been, well, Google verifies this. But he actually just straight up said, how do you know that what's running on the application is is the open source code that you see? And I was like, oh, fuck, I need to start using Silo, apparently, because I didn't have an answer to that. My answer would have been, I would hope that Google would have be verifying that. But the fact that he was the one concerned about that made me uh, like a little paranoid. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we do need verifiably decentralized, like, verifiably private i mean i don't know if, i don't know how you can have that without decentralization so hopefully y'all are those seekers are nodes in some capacity that can be doing something because i do think that more than ever we we need we need private encrypted communication and i don't know how um we get that uh yeah, yeah i that's don't know been if a, we that's have that been a it's been a big thing about the genesis of the Seekers project as well, you know, because we're, we're nearing the finish of build. Now it's like, all right, how do we actually get that out um, in a really engaging way um, that people grab onto so it's not just the hardcores um, that, that run the nodes out there. Um, and that's been a huge driver of the Seekers project. Obviously, there's, there's a lot more in it. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's a huge piece as a way to get that out um, and get that in people's hands and get them, get them running it in a, an UX um, appealing way. I mean that's the thing that people are excited about. It's the um it's the fact that um seekers, a character within the metaverse, um, can be an infrastructure in the real world. Um and it, it it's almost an interface for that really techy node technology um that makes it really easy to understand what's happening. Um and also um, you know, a lot easier to actually become part of the network and contribute to the network so that we can be having this conversation without it all going through, you know, one entity. It's actually spread out across the whole, um, the whole network in the same way that, um, you know, money is spread out across the Bitcoin network. Um, but yeah, and I mean, that, the, I mean, that is something that you've been, you've been working. I mean, like the last time I was in person with you in New Zealand, that's what y'all were doing is you were building a new website to try to get people to run nodes and like getting. We were thinking like, how do we incentivize people to do this? How do we get people to care i i think that it's clever what y'all are doing with seekers as at least a part of it from what i understand is like yeah i mean i think like the fluff ecosystem would would run nodes and i think until fluffs i don't think anybody really gave that much of a shit about what all the stuff we were building um and so yeah I, hmm. yeah i mean this has been a problem for not, not a problem just a hurdle or a barrier for you guys for a long time and I think that I think you found a really clever solution that I I think it will work. Yeah, and that's putting aside the fact that they're super cool. <laughs> and they yeah, um, I mean, they that, play all into the, the, whole all the stuff I've seen, those things are sick. Dude, what's going on behind <laughs> me? <laughs> Next time we do My something bad. like this, we just need to put Troy in charge because apparently he's got <laughs> he's got all the moves. Um, I, can, I was can messing I around with you, Navi. Where, where are we yeah, sitting time Navi? wise, Navi? Um, <laughs> hey guys, I lost my speaker permission, but um, yeah, y'all can just basically wrap it like however you want. Just head off the stage, and we'll get the recording. Uh, that that was amazing. So this is awesome, uh, being recorded. Yeah, that's what the um, film fest avatar is. He's been standing there the whole time. It's a, a recorder, I believe. Okay. Awesome, man. Because I think we're um, we right on the hour. In that we're right on the hour now, so we can probably wrap it. Just a uh, massive thanks again, guys, for for joining. It was awesome to yarn on the stuff, and um, yeah, be some really interesting sessions rolling over the next couple of days. Dude, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Hopefully we yeah, can thanks, guys. meet in the meet space soon. It's been way overdue since I've seen you guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was going to figure out how to close out the session, but it looks like Navi's running off to do that for us. <laughs>
Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for, for chiming in. Much obliged. Bye, Thank you, everybody. everyone. Have a good one. <laughs> thanks, guys. That's good. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Yeah, thanks a lot. I like your little baby Yoda thing. Yeah, you know, you got to uh you got to do a little dig and find stuff that's uh wherever you picked that one up is is fantastic <laughs> or wherever you came up with that one. <laughs> I got it from Troy. Like somehow he's getting the crazy <laughs> shit. Like, Wait, that's not even here. <laughs> 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 Finally, you there you go. <laughs> <laughs> does it actually shoot though? Uh, this one doesn't, but I have a. There's a couple avatars that I've gotten that actually do have guns that you can like shoot. <laughs> All right, later, Jordan. Later, bro. Right. Cheers, Troy. Later, guys. Nice job, everybody. Oh. See ya. Bye, guys. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Dang. Well, hey, let's get out of this. <laughs> let's get out of here. I'm just messing around at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, but check it out. Just playing. There's some cool stuff though. If we um, we gotta go down to the first floor. Okay. And like, if I did this, I wanna show you guys real quick. I'm coming. If I disappear, it's because my headset's going flat. First floor. Because he was the only person.